Hey everyone, welcome back to The Hidden Brick, where today we're doing our final part to the build of the LEGO Technic Bucket Wheel Excavator. So you can see we pretty much have the whole excavator complete as well as a little dump truck. So what is left is just some finishing body work and small other little details to add to the, uh, the excavator part. So I'm going to go ahead and move this back down a little bit closer to the table so we can jump right into the, the final details. And I'll move the camera around as we go to more or less uh, show everything that's being put on the, the model. So what I'm gonna do is open up my instruction book, kind of see where we're at. We are at um, page 470 of 540, 541 pages of instructions. So, um, absolute ton of steps. I mean, it's an enormous set, so what do you really expect? You expect this to be like a five page instruction book? Nah, it's a 580 page instruction book. Okay, so we're gonna start with this small little connector piece. It's really it. Um, let's see, we're gonna... Let me pick this up, move it around, see which is the best way to locate where this is going. That's the other thing is they actually zoom in pretty close on the model. So I'm just going to have to get creative here with moving stuff around. Okay, so this appears to be attaching in this pinhole right there. Next up, we have some light details to make, and it basically consists of these two pins with the stud on the end. Attach a couple more pieces. We have a black plate and two of these. Um, Cheese slopes, clear cheese slopes. So that's our light. And this will go right up here on the top portion of the excavator. This is shown in the very first hole, yeah. Shown it in this very first hole, and I know I'm really, really close to the camera, but Bear with me, this thing's ridiculous. Okay. So next, pull this back down. We're gonna do some more panels or body work, starting with these panels. So we have two of these, three long friction pins. With two, five long lift arms. gets two of these pins with axle on the end or an axle with a pin on the end however you want to look at it two friction pins and we have a sticker sticker number three so this was an enormous sticker sheet you can see we still have a good amount of stickers to go considering that we are on the very last bag of parts. You'd have thought maybe we would have made a little bit more progress on the stickers, but we haven't. It's okay, I'm not worried about it too much. All right, so I did notice on this, I was also supposed to have another bushing. How did I miss two of them? Yeah, there are supposed to be two. So over here, this is supposed to go right there. I don't have my model turned exactly how they 
Like they show the upper portion turned slightly different than how I have mine oriented, but I can pretty much follow along to where where they're telling me to put the stuff. All right, so we have this 15 long lift arm. I'm gonna attach some seemingly random friction pins on here. They're not random, they have a purpose, each one of them does, so make sure to follow along pretty closely to make sure you get them in the right spots. Two more, and then this 11 long piece. Have another 11 long lift arm. That'll attach there. I would say definitely in this last bag of parts, the majority of the parts are pins and small connecting pieces. We've pretty much used all the big stuff. There's only a good hand. You can see right here, just these little left arm pieces. That's all they are in this last bag. And then there's three huge piles of all the small connector pieces. But those tend to go pretty quickly once you start doing stuff like this. It doesn't take too long to realize that they're almost all gone. All right, so this piece attaches like that. We have three more of the three long friction pins. And two more of them for this small angled lift arm. I have a black axle with a pin on it. It's a too long axle with a single friction pin on it. Piece goes in here. And we'll go there. Okay. Next up is for these white thin lift arms. On a red axle. Push it on the table, it all kind of lines up. I'll put that in here with another red axle. It's actually not going in very well. Okay. Found a spot on the table to push it in. That'll make for almost impossible deconstruction of it, but hey. Just have to cross that bridge when we get there. All right, last axle piece is this three long axle. All right, so we're connecting a bunch of small little pieces to this. Not quite sure why just yet, but we'll just kind of go with it for now. All right, so that piece goes there, and we have another one of these angled pieces. We'll attach to the other side. A single three long piece. And then we have a 
five long axle. I'll go through there. We have two long lift arms, which are kind of semi rare. Get too many of those in the Technic sets. We have a few more on here. So this looks like we're creating the um, the operator seat, the driver's seat. Trying to line it up with the pinhole. Nope, there is no pinhole there. Oh, I see what I did. This is supposed to go over it like that. Another one there. All right, looks good. Two more of these three long friction pins and a regular friction pin. white panel. All right, so it looks like it's a two-seater. Got two seats in there. A little bit of micro seats because the scale of this thing is enormous. This looks like the panel, side panel for the other side, which will go just like that. All right, so next up, we have some Lego system pieces. We have this wedge plate with the Technic brick. We have two bricks with studs on the side. Attach to she slopes on there, and then we have this kind of trans smoke colored windscreen it attaches like that, and then we attach it just like that. So that kind of forms the shape of the cockpit area. friction pins. Two regular friction pins and a another panel. Next is this axle with the pin combo piece. Two pins with studs in there. Plate and two of the trans clear cheese slopes. All right, two more pins and another panel. That looks like it creates the roof portion for this cockpit. So that looks good. Turn this around. Another panel. 
panel with three long friction pin and two more two long friction pins. Once again, we're kind of just adding all these pins exactly where they showed in the instructions. It kind of seems random, but we've got to make sure to do it right. I did mess up one uh, step earlier in this uh, series of builds. I think it was part three of the build where I had one of the pieces turned slightly wrong. It was in the right spot, but I had it turned wrong and it legitimately messed everything up to where I had to stop recording and go back and fix a lot of stuff. So I learned my lesson the hard way, even though during that time I kept saying, make sure you do it right. Make sure you follow the instructions. It's really important. And that still happened to me. there. So we have a pin with a stud and then we're going to put a bar through it just like that. Two more of the three long, actually one of the three long friction pins and then this axle with a, a pin. Go right here. I'm not quite sure what the bar is for just yet, but we'll just kind of go with it for now and just see what happens. This one goes here, and then we have two non friction pins. Sandwich this 15 long. Lift arm right there. And then we have another piece here. All right, so next we have another one of these little L-shaped lift arms with three regular friction pins on them. Three long lift arm. And this will slide in here, just like that. Okay, so that bar, now it makes sense, is to connect a, a ladder piece to it. So that clips on just like that. And then it also shows a black bevel gear there. And this piece going like that. So we're making a pretty long part. We'll go ahead and bring our excavator over and attach it on here. So we have, looks like everything lining up just like this. There we go. like that works for me. So we have these little yellow, um, they call them axle joiners with the little pinholes perpendicular on them. And then we're going to put the non-friction pin that has a half pin on it. Put this half lift arm, that piece will go there. So it shows us making two of these. So the first one is gonna go right here. So let me make the other one. It's identical. Okay. The 
this one's going to be turned around and we're going to bring it up over here. This one actually will attach right there. It's kind of like a ladder and guardrail type piece and then that will lift arm and fold it up. So I guess when they're up, when they climb the ladder and get up on the, the actual excavator, then that will fold up and then they walk along this catwalk to get up to the driver's cabin. Okay, so next is some more of these, what are more or less going to be guardrails. This one here. Okay, looks good. So these are all the, the small pieces I was talking about that we just had so many of them in this, this bag. It's literally all of these pieces. This is a guardrail piece. It's gonna go right next to the cabin here. And we're gonna make another one. regular friction pin in it. Pin joiner, I mean axle joiner. Another axle joiner. We have our nine long axle. 90 degree axle joiner and a three long axle. Shows it turned like this. Insert that in there. This piece goes in there, and this piece goes right there. So there you go. It's like they designed it to fit perfectly. So that's the guardrails for that side. Next up we have um, three more light pieces to make. Actually it looks like six more, but they're slightly different. So one difference between these, and it's where that blue pin is. So we have that one. Overall, other than connecting the little tank tread pieces on this set, this really hasn't been a, a set that has had many repetitive steps at all. It's all been pretty unique. That kind of makes a large set like this pretty fun to build because there's not a lot of repetition. So I would say this is probably one of the few times in this set that we're kind of doing the same thing over and over again. All right, so we have three of one type built and then the other three, it's just gonna have the pin on this side. So you can see the difference there. One's on one side and the other's on the other. So 
just need to make two more of them. All right, last one for now. It looks like we still have enough parts to make a few more. So we'll probably end up making some more in a future step. two pieces there so he's gonna go up high so I'm gonna move this up and up even higher I mean it's, it is all the way at the top of this model that's kind of where they're going so this one is gonna go right there this one goes here this one goes here. So these are the lights, I guess when they're digging in the dark, that will light everything up so you can see what you're doing. Um, let's see, it shows three of them, so there's another one. Okay, so. Move this all the way to the front, we have one. the other one okay so on the front of this be a lot of this moving this camera around basically on both sides of this excavator bucket we're gonna put these two light pieces on there so you can see it went right there all right so once again, we're going to be working up here at the top. Move this over best I can. And I'm actually, this thing is so big, I'm actually standing up to grab the next part. So we have these five long axles, axle joiner, nine long axle. And this pin with um, axle joiner on it. That will go there. Two of these perpendicular pieces with the red axles. So both go there. We have two more, but instead of the red axles, we're going to do the, the blue axle with the pin combo piece. One of those going there. We got the 90 degree axle joiner. It looks like what we're going to do we're going to hold this axle joiner right here and slide this axle all the way over just like that. Grab the parts for the next step. So this gonna have all of that connected like that. And slide all the way across in there. So we're basically building the simulated guardrails for the top.
portion. All right, so here's another couple axles. All right, and we have the four long, 90 degree, two yellow bushings. That'll go there. Cool. So let's move this back to the side and I can move this back down because it looks like we have another bigger panel piece to make. And then when it comes time to attach it, we'll move the camera back up again. So we'll start with the seven long lift arm, two, three long pieces, seven long, five long. So that slides all the way through here. Another piece here. And we have this kind of fender looking panel. And this will go like that. Axle joiner, another axle with a too long pin. Shows that sliding on here with this little joiner piece to help hold it together. Okay. Two more friction pins and another and with the perpendicular pinhole piece. So we turn this around and we have a good amount of stickers to put on now. Looks like we're gonna have sticker number 17 going right here. Sticker number 18. Sticker, put that back on there. Where are we at here? 17, 19. Okay, I need 19. Sticker 19 there. And we have 18. And sticker number one. Got some uh, stripes on that one. Just kind of the yellow part of the sticker actually blends in pretty well with the rest of the panel there. All right, so once again, we're gonna bring this up. I'm gonna grab this, rotate it around because they show this one going more along the back here. So right back here. out all right so that goes there and we've got this red pen under here so it should line up with one of those holes connected on there oh, you know what I forgot to do I'm missing one of these pieces on here. I don't know how I missed one of those, but we've got it taken care of. That will go there. So you see it makes a nice 
panel piece. So we'll move this down again and we have to build the other side, which should be pretty much the same thing. those friction pins and I'll actually get this thing on this time. Pushing piece, we'll slide that all the way in. All right, so this, we're doing the same panels, just kind of uh different order. That slides there. This one will go right here. Slide the other one on. Let's see, where's that last piece? In here somewhere there it is all right so that's the last one of these parts it's kind of blending in with some of the other yellow pieces so that's why it was a little bit trickier to find okay so have all of that on there so now we can do the other stickers so our Sticker 15 here, sticker 17. Sticker one. And sticker number 16. So, bring this back up, turn this back around, so just like the other side we're going to line it up with that red pin, and actually I could push the pin up, it may actually be easier, and then just slide this down on top of it. And we rotate all of this around, connect it to all of those pins that are there. So that works out nicely. And we have this lift arm that's going to go all the way across, kind of help hold that together. And once again, we're going to move that to the side. We have, it looks like another catwalk piece to make. And some more railing parts. We'll start with the 15 long lift arm and we have friction pin. That piece there. Seven long. bent lift arms with two of these black axles that have a pin on the end. And we're going to attach an assortment of friction pins on kind of the rest of the lift arm. That three long piece there and then another 
bent left arm. And this piece all attaches there. We have our axle joiner with two long axles on it, two of the 90 degree axle joiners with the axle with pin. Those will go there. Degree, I need a four long rack, four long, there it is. It's the last one of those. It was kind of hiding from me, but I was able to get it. pieces and one more of the axle joiners and we have the thin lift arm with the non-friction pins on them one of them going here attach the other one right there that piece will attach right there Okay, so that's it for that piece. Raise this back up, turn it around. It's so heavy, but that top part, which kind of acts as a handle, actually is pretty, pretty sturdy. So I'm starting by lining up that axle hole. And then the pinholes should follow after that. It's like, once again, another moment of truth pieces. And of course, we've got so many pins that are trying to line up all at the same time that it's Proving to be pretty difficult to line them all up. So you have to kind of wiggle it, line everything up. These last two are the ones that are giving me the biggest issue. Finally, I've got it all on there. So that's another catwalk area with the guardrails so you don't fall off. All right, back down again. More friction pin pieces. Of these great panels. Two more of those, and one more down here. This one goes, wait a minute, move that one down one, and right there, now this will go here with the three long 
friction pen piece here. Two of these thin lift arms. I'm going to slide a bar inside of that. And this whole piece will go right there. This is another guardrail piece. Got five. Got that. Turn this around. Turn it this way. Slide it all the way through. friction pins. We're definitely getting close. We're down to the last handful of parts. So on the back side we have four more friction pins. One, two, three, and four. Turn it back around. We have three of these ladder pieces. They just snap together and then that bar piece that we had on there snap right there. That creates a ladder tower type piece. Once again, we'll bring this over. Oops. Forgot to tighten the tripod. So, where does this connect to? That's a good question. right because then the platform is right here so they they come out of the driver's compartment and go all the way up the stairs and then they can walk all the way up to whatever this upper platform is for which I'm not too sure what it's for all right so we have another small little panel piece to make here. Attach a couple more friction pins to them. Add those two pieces there. And we have our four friction pins on the back side. This is going on the other side, obviously. So I'll rotate this around, bring this up. I 
That does a good job of covering up all of those large frame pieces that are there as well. All right, a couple more parts. So bring it back down. I have this wedge panel. I have two, three long friction pins. Two of those pieces. All right, guess what time it is. Last sticker time, can't believe it. So that giant sticker goes on the side of that panel. And this piece goes right there. So we have a couple more light bars to make. I was saying earlier, it looks like we had enough pieces to make a few more, and I believe that's exactly what we're doing. So we have the plate and the two cheese slopes. Attach that piece and a three long. This one will go right there. So this one is very similar. And it will go back here. And we finally have one more light piece to make. this one going this one appears to be going on the end of this conveyor belt piece All right there so there it is that completes the build of it so let me move this Hammer back. Quite a bit, so we can actually see the whole thing. And then the other thing we got to do is figure out how to use the thing, because there it is battery operated. There's some functions that are battery operated, um, and then there's some functions that are manual. So the instruction book has a kind of like a graphical description of what everything is supposed to do. So we're gonna figure it out. So um, basically what, what this does is the bucket wheel part over here, in, in real life, this thing is down in a canyon or some sort of man-made hole. And this is actually digging into the side of a mountain or a large hill. So it's not digging down, it's actually digging over across into a hill so the, the scooping action actually ha happens right here. And then whatever it digs up, it drops it down into a little chute that the conveyor belt pulls it over and then it falls again into another chute, which this conveyor belt will then drop into a um, some sort of dump truck type thing. And that's more or less what we have right here. So some of the manual functions is you can see there's a knob here that i can turn and actually slightly lower and raise the whole bucket wheel arm it's it's not much but it's something um, we saw the other function over there with the ladder 
as far as um, this piece right over here, that's a manual function. And then the other manual function is this piece right here. It kind of rotates about 180 degrees across like this. So you can kind of pick wherever you want to put it to put your uh, dump truck underneath. Now there's a little switch right here and what this does is it allows you to lock it. So once you have it there, it's supposedly supposed to lock. Now the way that the, the Technic gears actually work is there is a little bit of play in them. So even with it locked, it actually still does slightly move a little bit, but it doesn't move a lot. So those, that's pretty much the manual function. So let me turn this on. So you can hear we've got our motor going. Um, and the first in the instructions, first thing it shows us doing is pushing this. Okay, so you can see our, our bucket is moving as well as our conveyor belt. So that gets that moving. Doesn't do anything the other way. Rest of the functions aren't doing too much. So when I put the batteries in, they weren't like the most brand new batteries, but it's definitely seems to be binding up already. So I may have to switch out some batteries. Because none of the other functions are actually working. So th this, one of the functions is supposed to have a drivetrain function. Let me see if I lift it up. Yeah, it's not working at all. That was one of the reviews I, ha I heard when I when I first the set first came out was the fact that there's so many functions that are running among pretty much on one drivetrain that um, the the clutch gears more or less take over way too early and it allows um, little to no function with it. But you can at least see that, I mean, some of it is working. We've got that piece working. So let me drop some, some of these larger t uh, bricks in there. We can kind of see how the conveyor system works. You can see they're starting to come out. I actually heard one hit the ground. Some of them are working, some of them it isn't. And in real life, this thing actually does move very, very slow because it's just so enormous. So the way it's, it's moving is actually probably pretty realistic as far as the speed of it. And I do have it going, you can see it's dropping back into the dump truck area for the most part. It's hit or miss. So anyway, I bet if I put a fresh set of batteries in there, the uh, the whole thing will work a little bit better. I'm going to see if I can manually get this to rotate a little bit. It's just not rotating at all. That's weird. Um, oh, it says I have to have Okay, so I have to have both of those switched on so 
there's two switches that have to both be turned. Now you can see it's actually turning. Like I said, it's very, very slow, but it is actually working now. And then same with the, the drivetrain. It says that I have to have both of these going for it to actually work. Train is actually not turning at all. Oh wait, hold on, hold on. <laughs> this is so confusing. All right, so it shows it has to be in like this upward neutral position. Okay, I see it's. It's actually pretty confusing, but it is working now. It's actually. Pretty flawless. It actually surprised how well it moves, considering how big and heavy it is. But it is actually working now that I figured it out. It's basically you have to have certain combinations for it to work. Like I said, it's very very slow, but it does work. That is really, really cool. So let me go ahead and stop it for now. But there you go. That is the Lego Technic Bucket Wheel Excavator. Uh, absolutely enormous set. I actually, this is one of the reasons why I haven't built it is um, I, don't, I don't know where I'm gonna put this. It is literally that big that, um, you know, it's just a matter of where do I have somewhere to put something like this. So I'm gonna have to figure that out. Um, you tell me your thoughts, put a comment down below. Appreciate you guys watching. If you watched all parts, then you are my biggest fan. Make sure to let me know that you watched them all. Uh, make sure to check out all the links I have down below. If you love this video, you'll love everything else. So check it all out and we'll see you in the next one.